hunting. I want to go to the next point about markets. Your second alpha, market closed trading strategies. Can you start from first principles and, and walk me through what you're seeing about the structural inefficiency that, that you want to take advantage of? Definitely. If technology, talent, stock specific stock picking is the future alpha, I think the current arbitrage opportunity in the China Asia market is the existing alpha. So the current alpha, I would label it. Why it's happening is because Chinese people like saving. And there is a lot of Chinese retail investor, they are entering the China market. 30% new account openings this year. The younger generation start taping to the China equity market. Volume, transaction volume has spiked by 20% year on year basis. All this provide liquidity to the system. But at the same time, there are really unique rules, trading pattern in the China market, which is untaped by global institutional investor or hedge fund, which create this so-called arbitrage opportunity. And Alvin, I'll give you two examples. One, which is convertible bond arbitrage or convertible bond trading, if you like. In China, there is a limit up, limit down stock mechanism. 10% for the main board the day, and then you limit up, and then the stock will stop trading. Right. But for It's like a circuit breaker, right? Yeah, it's like a circuit breaker. But convertible bond, there is no limit up, limit down mechanism before. And last year, there is a 30% limit up, limit down. So a lot of the retail investor, without CFA professional like yourself doing the Black Shows model to do option pricing, they just trade the convertible bond like the extension of the current stocks. For example, if the current stock limit up, they thought, well, I want some beta exposure of the same stock. They'll just buy the convertible bond in the market. So this type of phenomenon create a mispricing opportunity for convertible bond trading manager by using the Black Shows model in stripping out the option price of the convertible bond. Second, there is a refix mechanism of this convertible bond strike price, which is also unique in the China market. So this type of China-specific rules mechanism and the small percentage of institutional or global institutional investor participation makes this type of global strategy really interesting, unique, and low correlated to the rest of the strategy in the world. And last year, for example, some of the convertible bond fund strategy, they were up mid-teens type of return. Year to day, high teens when the China Asia market is flat. So I would call it this is a current alpha because the first one is, is because of the current investor sentiment. They want to trade more, it's more active, and it's because of the rule like this. And then the smart manager, the manager, they can try to participate in this sector. So don't tell everyone about it because I think it's like public rent. <laughs> Once many people right. doing that, it will dissipate. So this is the first example before I go to the second example on the current arbitrage or the alpha for the China market. So I guess it's a structural inefficiency in a way, right? because almost the market continues after spot moves, market continues with the CB space. Is CB accessible by all investors or is it institutions only? No, it's all accessible. Even the retail is buying it. So there is some structural reason why CB is being also issued, not just by the banks, but some of the big company as well. It's also a structural alpha, a structural historical opportunity. If you look at the past 10 years, the private company or some of the listed company, either they get loan from the banks or they get the issue bonds in the public market. But some of the subsector, actually, they get the private debt or private loan from the wealth management circle. But three years ago, the Chinese government stopped this pseudo guarantee funding sources and asked the private and public company to use fixed income instrument to do fundraising. So either you issue a bond, issue a convertible bond, or you get a loan from the bank. But the loan is licking their wounds, you know, from the real estate phenomenon. That's why they are not lending yeah. too much. Then the end result is those high growing company, either they issue strict fixed income or they want to put some sweetener in issuing the convertible bond. So the convertible bond market is ballooning and is supported by the policy. So that's why it's a current alpha. I think it would be a five years game, you know, five years later for those structural reasons, if they disappear, then there would be other alpha opportunity in the convertible bond space. Are these accessible from offshore? Because offshore investors can only access Hong Kong, Shanghai, Stock Connect stocks on spot. They can access some of the commodities. 
But is CV accessible as well, or do you need a QFI for that? It is. If you use the quota called QFII, Qualified Foreign Institutional Investor, given the still ABC anything but China demand, the QFI quota from the broker is uh, very economical. The latest check is we are talking about 0.2% to 0.3% of QFI quota cost from the brokers, and then you can invest in the CB directly. Got it. So would they run this directly with the brokers, or would you need like a, an investment manager, an active manager to help with this? Well, you need professional like ourselves. That's why I'm giving yes. out the secret sauce. <laughs> I'm just kidding aside. <laughs> there, there, there is um, still a know-how in between, because right. a lot of people are trading this type of CB pure from quant model, screening out the overpriced and underpriced. But you and I understand credit is the main component when we're investing in and how likely the management is going to refix the downward price and whether they will pay back the principal down the road or not. So for growth, we are laying out quantitative with fundamental checking on the fundamental and a lot of global investors, if they are not familiar with the bottom up research on the sector and company in China, they may face a challenge in doing that. Let's move on to the third alpha. Let me add a little bit on the second alpha, if you don't sure. mind, you know, because yeah. the second alpha is the current alpha, which is the alpha in the China market due to structural opportunity, retail sentiment, a lot of activities. The second example, which is even more unique and less spoke about in the China market is what I call a limit up arbitrage strategy. If you recall, 30% year on year growth of new account openings, brokerage account opening in China, there's about 5,000 listed company in China eight shares among the main board and small board, etc. Guess around 40%, four zero of the 5,000 companies in China this year touch limit up once or more about. Although the market is flat, so limit up is 10% up in one day. So limit up is really a strange phenomenon in development market like China. But this creates a lot of arbitrage opportunity for the real player. So one of the strategies that we are doing in-house and some of the really unique peer group they are doing is called Limit Up Strategy. Basically, it's a function of quantitative and qualitative skill set require is to buy the stock right before it limit up when they close today. Because there is a huge opportunity in this is there is a high probability for the Limit Up stock today will continue to limit up tomorrow. So it is a combination of investor sentiment, whether you can access quickly with the broker to execute the trade and which stock you want to pick on it. And we are talking... Is this a latency sense? It sounds like it's a latency sensitive strategy. It's more than a pure flash boys type of arbitrage. Okay. Because when it limit up, it limit up like this. And then there's a lot of quant fund also trying to target it as well. And some of the retail as well. So it's a combination of technology, stock picking, analysis, and then execution. And we're talking about 0, 0.0 something seconds when the stock go up from 1% to 8%, 9%, and then 9.5. So the sweet spot is once it cross 9%, boop, 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 it will go up really quickly. And how much allocation you can be able to execute. If it's a pure arbitrage because of the size or technology, we can't do it and other guys can't do it. Because the winner would be the huge quant fund that they would call it. But the sweet spot, not that. The sweet spot is a combination of the factor that I mentioned. And we are talking about six zero, sixty percent of annualized return. And the good thing is it's positive. Wait, wait, but quality. William, hold on a second. So you mean it's both quantitative and qualitative, and you do need a strong analysis of the stock, obviously. Because I imagine that the moment that you limit up and it stops, it also becomes in a liquid position, right? It's illiquid if the stock is up more than 10% in that day. Yeah. If there is some seller coming back, the stock can go back to liquid. Oh, it will, it will stop okay. trading for that particular day if there are more buyers, there's no seller about that price. And then the next day, it will start trading again. Why the qualitative component is also important is there is some fake limit up, if you like. People cut, keep buying up the stock in low volume and they will limit up and then the next day, boom, it will go down again. So it's not a pure, simple quantitative strategy compete on execution. If that is the case, all the big one fund is doing that and there's no need or niche player in doing that. But the reason why I mentioned this is a current structural alpha is taking advantage of the retail investors 
uh, feel that a limit up stock, they will continue to limit up, up tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. Because people want to chase the hot theme, if you like. And the caveat, if you like, is if it's limit up and it's overbought, maybe the next day it will go down and oversold and limit down. So the good thing about this strategy is if the position is unique or if the signal is correct, you only trade when there is opportunity. If you can't execute the trade, you don't lose any money. So basically, it's optionality type of payoff. So in sentiment or in market environment, there is little retail participation. People or the stock don't limit up or there is no main theme rotating in China. There's no signal, no trade. Then the return is just like this. But when the market is hot coming back, there is rotation. Then you see a return profile of 6-0, six 60% six annualized return. Wow. So again, this is current alpha opportunity that we are seeing and executing at grow. And I think it's a limited capacity thing, but I'm happy to yeah. share the details because that represent for global investor, if you are not actually trading domestic in the China's Asia market, you're missing out this piece of the so-called structural current alpha, you know. Yeah, no, that's interesting. It's funny you, you explain it really, if you know how to read it right, it is actually is alpha because when you talk about limit up, circuit breakers, etc., Traditionally, it, it makes investors nervous. They're like, oh, hold on a second. Yeah. This is a highly regulated market. It's really not free market dynamics, but it is a characteristic, if not a feature in the onshore markets, which you don't really see anywhere else. Yes, exactly. And it's a history. That's why if you look back in history, even in US and Europe, arbitrage or the structural alpha opportunity tends to be more in the old days when regulations is forming or when people are trying to participate. And the uh, market is more structural. The alpha source is tends to be more concentrated, more competition. And then it's cornered by the huge macro guy and capacity issue. The limit up, limit down and retail participation is a really unique characteristic in the China Asia market, which you don't see a lot in other market because it's liquid. If China Asia market is not trading at 1 trillion renminbi per day, I think there is not any point for us to talk about or even to arbitrage this type of opportunity. But yeah. it's liquid, it's huge, and there's a lot of retail. And uh, But over time, I would say maybe five years down the road, if the market mature, if we follow the footpath of Hong Kong, Taiwan, and all the mature market, I believe the limit up range will be more widened, or even the regulator will take out the limit up, limit down mechanism. So let's talk about real estate. We've been wrestling.